You may have noticed when you're running large language models on your own computer that all the resources are fully consumed. All the CPUs and GPUs are maxed out. That be that's because these models require a lot of compute power in order to operate. What you might have considered putting this on a separate computer and then accessing that computer remotely from somewhere else on your network. The main problem is when you're using Olama server, it launches on a, a local port only on your system that you run it on, which means even if you have access to the LAN, your local area network, other computers cannot access it because the port is bound only on your local machine. There's a way to open it up. And the good news is it's fairly straightforward on each of the environments, Mac, Linux, and Windows. All you have to do is copy and paste these commands or simply follow these instructions for like on Mac, for example, you'll wanna run this command here in a terminal window and then restart the Olama application. On Linux, you'll do similar just by editing the Olama service file and adding the environment Olama host to 0000. What this does is it says that it's gonna bind it to a local LAN uh, accessibility. Otherwise, it will not be remotely accessible to another computer on your network. Then you'll, using uh, system control, you'll reload Olama like this on Linux. And then on Windows, it's a little more easy. There's a, there's a panel that allows you to define the variables. And then you want the variables, the host will be 0000. And then your, your model will be the model that you're interested in running on Windows. See, this is the problem that we're getting around. Olama binds to 127001, which is only accessible on your own system. But if you bind it to all zeros, it's going to open it up. So on my Mac, I'll run this command here. I will restart my Olama application. All right, my application's restarted. Now I should be able to access this uh, locally, not only in my own system by accessing port 000, because that means my local system. You also, all you need to do is find the IP address that your system is currently on, and it could be any of the interfaces. You might have a network port or a Wi-Fi uh, address, and you would just find what those addresses are. Now, on any computer, on your phone, on your phone, on a laptop, or any other kind of system, you'll be able to remotely access the model running on the machine that you have it running on. So I'll just run this real quick note that you're gonna get a streaming JSON response. And in this response, uh, you'll see a bunch of JSON, the model, the date, and the response is gonna be on a per token basis. So you can see each response here. It says uh, response S, sure. So uh, let's walk through it. I said, hello, and it says uh, sure, comma, how can I help you? So then you might want to write an application to consume that. There's probably also a few other um, interesting commands you can throw out the, the REST API that will print it out uh, without all the JSON surrounding. And if you check this out, there's a whole list of options to boot up a web and desktop application, which then you can point to a remote endpoint to another system on, on your uh, network. For example, here's one of the UIs in action. Uh, you simply can configure it. You just paste in the IP address. And now you essentially have your own chat GPT running uh, on a remote computer, on a remote server, on your local network, being able to access. Yeah, see right there, there's the uh, kind of hard to see on the, on your screen maybe. Uh, so you would just click on any of these links here. Open web UI seems to be the, uh, the one at the top.